Yes, good morning all of you. I hope you all, you all are learning the lessons with sincerity and you are showing commitment. Today we are to focus at yet another chapter that is the lost spring. I hope you know what spring is. It's a beautiful season, but if it is lost, what is that? The chapter is all about such a situation. The chapter that we are to focus at right now is Lost Spring by Anis Jung. Remember Anis Jung. His spelling is J-U-N-G, but it's so many out there have seen that they say Jung Jung. It's not Jung. It's Jung. English is amazing in that sense. C H E M I S T R Y chemistry, the sound K. But C H A P T E R, it becomes chapter. So you have to listen well. This is what I want to tell you. Lost Spring by Anis Jung. Lost Spring. What? Stories of stolen childhood. Now assume a child. And the child must be happy. If there is a life, it must be thriving. It must be flourishing. That is what we think when we are positive. But if the life is suffering at some level, in some sense, it is not good to look at, to witness, to observe, or to be in that um, one's own self. So when there is the spring season, uh, things must blossom. What a beautiful scene out there. Nature exhibits when it is a spring season, but suppose it is lost. Means for saying sake it is a spring. A child must thrive, must blossom, like the flowers blossom in the spring season, but it gets lost. Why? Through two episodes, with regards to, in particular, through the first boy, that is, that, that is a part of the rat picker community, who right now lives, they are, they, they are living like squatters in the, in, at Simapuri. At the outskirts of Delhi. Name is Sahib -e Alam. Sahib -e Alam. What a grand name. Sahib -e Alam. In great contrast is the reality that is very harsh, troubling, trying situations are there in the boy's life. And he belongs to the rat picker community. Sahib -e Alam. So, through the first episode and with the story of that poor boy who belongs to the rat picker community, we get an insight into particularly the life of the boy and all such boys around who have no chance to go to school and earn education. But they have to be like that only. Loitering around for the day, for the whole day and picking the garbage, scribbling around things that may bring them some money so that they can they, they may uh, keep their body and soul together so the rat picker community is talked about in the very first episode episode number one and through the story of sahib -e alam the second the second episode it takes my name as the boy and the name of the boy is mukesh what a plight he belongs to the Bengal makers community of the town Firozabad. If I'm correct, somewhere in Agra. The world renowned place in terms of dazzling bangles. So they are they are uh, impeccable artists. But in great contrast is the, the reality of their own life. 
what a light once again so the the spring has never actually come to them it's already gone it's already lost there is a life it is devoid of any such essence of life that is their life so in particular two communities are talked about but you can broaden your vistas uh, and you can understand what might be happening to uh, other such people or communities you must have uh, you definitely must have seen some chotus working in some shops a chotu pani lana a chotu ye lana you belong to a the privileged community you have all happy situations you have money you can afford great things you go to some place you you go to some uh, mechanics shop these people are everywhere sweet little boys working for others doing the washing doing the cleaning for others and they are chided every now and then what a plight people are chasing them away when they come to a street obviously you think that oh here comes a thief because they they are in dirty sh shabby clothes all torn they have they have to stay barefoot they have no uh, slippers or chappals and they look like as if they are thieves and you try to chase them away this is their life they live like squatters squatters are the illegal settlers in this second episode we find a community that is uh, that is the bangal uh, makers community and in the town in the town of ferozabad they make dazzling bangles bangles represent a life that is uh, a happy situation a bride would want to wear the bangles dazzling bangles wanting to have a photo shot with those bangles but what about the uh, life of the the makers the creators of those dazzling uh, bangles the dreams they they represent somebody's uh, fulfillment of dreams or or missions i hope you are clear with the uh, with the significance of the title here why lost spring why spring and why it is lost spring because a child is supposed to be happy without any worries a child is supposed to thrive a child is the spring season no cares no worries you just feel free do anything and people would even love the nuisance that you create around oh my sweet baby oh come on come on baby they would say because you are a sweet child but here we find that with these children spring has never uh, dawned on them the childhood is a suffering situation for Uh, both the representations both the communities at large so particularly we are talking about the children and through the children we are trying to get an insight into the, into the story or the plight of such people and broadly speaking the entire community because the children are a part of the community so the lost spring stories of what type of a childhood stolen childhood so let this be a, a beautiful anecdote from anis young that gives us an insight into the this particular lost spring and all the stories of stolen childhood because there are two stories that are projected here or trade here displayed here for us to gain what let us gain some empathy there is sympathy there is empathy let us gain some empathy further than even sympathy so the first episode a phase number 1 talks about uh, the life of the rat picker community who who right now uh, who, who had to flee from bangladesh they had their own lands they had their own um, 
houses out there but they had to flee from that place what is the reason behind maybe there is a natural calamity or there is something else and they had to uh, run to save themselves etc etc and right now they live in the outskirts of delhi that is simapuri is the place that is in focus here sima they live as what as squatters squatters are the illegal settlers so if you are an illegal settler uh, you will be driven or chased away every now and then sometimes by the local uh, police sometimes by the leaders sometimes by the local people we call it slum you know what a slum is see what type of a horrible situation slums have how people are suffering so let us earn some empathy and do something for our other brothers and sisters they are not in any relation to our blood but we all are human beings so my purpose of telling you all these things is that i want by my sweet learners to earn empathy through this chapter let us be substantial enough so that we are capable of doing things for others as well last spring i'll quickly move into the chapter now particularly last spring stories of stolen childhood by anis yung it talks about the plight of the children in particular first episode is related to saheb e alam his life a grand name but in great contrast is the reality of his life that he is no saheb e alam in his real life and he has no idea what the name indicates even anis yung is the first hand witness of the life that saheb e alam has and then she is very inquisitive ha huh? anis yung is very inquisitive she keeps on asking questions asking questions i already told you when you ask a question you learn something because somebody answers you and you gain some learning so anis yung is very inquisitive she keeps on chasing the boy and uh, and other such keeps on asking the questions she is uh, she has been a renowned columnist she has been an editor as well she has been associated with different different newspapers so obviously a reporter is always inquisitive so she keeps on asking questions and earns some uh, glimpse of the real life situations in saheb e alam and other such boys and deeper into the community that is the rag picker community who right now live at simapuri the outskirts of delhi and they are living like squatters squatters illegal settlers first episode saheb e alam is the protagonist the central figure anis yung is the onlooker and she observes life that is not at all thriving very first one uh, rag picker community the second episode is related to the boy who is a bit different from saheb e alam how i will slowly and gradually try to give you the insight he is a bit different his name is mukesh and he belongs to the bangal making community they are the bangal makers and the place is ferozabad world renowned for dazzling bangles elegant bangles bangles elegant magnificent beautiful all these adjectives can be attached to bangles bangles symbolize somebody's dreams you must have seen those uh dramatic presentations where uh, some husband dies and and uh, bangs like the film like uh, rudali and uh, other if you can understand obviously you have better vistas than even your teachers sometimes you are very smart kids i know so bangles represent somebody's fulfillment the dreams fulfilled and somebody is happy out there 
but what about the makers of those bangles oh they are sufferers their life is a horrible situation so through mukesh's story we get ample of idea about the situation at the town of ferozabad related to the bangal makers community and life that is obviously not a thriving it is a suffering situation for everybody out there now when there is something when you fall sick when you fall ill there must be some reason what is the reason let us divide the society into two two parts one is the privileged community and the other is the non privileged community let us as of course we are we belong to the privileged community we can have online lessons i have a job and that gives me respect people respect me i am called a teacher a white collared job a profession that is worth having something quality you are able to afford this education you have a big house you have fantastic food to eat delicious delicacies and you have friends who belong to the same level you may be affluent you may be rich you may be not so rich but finally you are privileged enough to gain a beautiful picture of life what about those they belong to the second part that is the non privileged community so in the in the chapter lost spring by anis jung the stories of stolen childhood we get an insight into the non privileged communities for example first one the rag pickers community the second one is the uh, bengal makers community both are sufferers no life but they are living they have to live one cannot choke one's throat that would be suicide so you have to live but life is certainly never going to come to you so there must be a reason behind you have seen uh, the world abounds in in corruption people are corrupt the mentalities are evil intentions are uh, evil we are privileged but we are doing nothing to uplift the situation of these people if it is so if you are helping people out there if you are uh, compassionate towards the suffering of the people out there and you actually do do not just click pictures oh i give you 1 rupee okay let me have a uh, selfie and i'll quickly post it on my facebook wall and earn so hundred thousands of likes let it be in reality that is implied i am trying to tell you this so we get ample of insight into the plight sad plight of these people the glass blowing industry is a horrible situation the ultimate aim is to earn empathy so earn skills earn capabilities so that you may help the people who desperately uh, need your help at any level help your own self first help others love your own self first and love your other brothers and sisters that is the intention here a lesson within a lesson or so many lessons within this lesson so if there is a problem there must be some reason this chapter also talks about the various solutions that that may be devised for example uh, we have we also have yet another poetry that is an elementary school classroom in a slum you can connect this prose part to that poetry section as well i'll quickly read a few lines for you sometimes i find a rupee in the garbage 
the first episode life of sahib e alam through him the sad plight of the rat pickers community what they are what they suffer from and what are the reasons behind what are the stigmas there are two types of stigmas please remember one is the internal stigma one is the stigma or stigmas that are without within without within without in you out of you for example suppose you are hesitant that is a hindrance suppose you do not ask a question that is a hindrance so internal stigma suppose you feel shy internal stigma external stigma like for these for 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 this rat picker community or the other people uh, like you must have seen casteism prevails corrupt politicians the corrupt people if i do not teach you well if i am not honest with my profession it means that this is some outside uh, stigma because how would you learn you depend on me for some kind of a learning and i'm corrupt with my behavior with my attitude so obviously that for you would be outside stigma so that would hinder your progress obviously because you expect something from somebody and somebody is a corrupt fellow is a corrupt heart is a corrupt mentality is an evil soul so your progress would hinder and lots of other barriers you can uh, assume all the things you are smart enough i understand so internal stigma and external stigma we get an insight into the two types of words one is the word that rules inside people think child marriage is good people think child marriage is bad remember sati pratha thank god these are uh, not prevailing right now but still some are practicing this in some parts of the country at least or in uh, across the world so we get an insight into all such stigmas also through the these episodes so first episode gives us an insight and the extension happens in the second episode where we find there is a boy mukesh let me also hint to you that there is a comparison and contrast in both the boys so what is the compare when well, both are non privileged sahib e alam if he would get a chance would go obviously would go to school but neither does he have uh, an idea as to what education would do to him let me once again remind you of my definition of education education is a liberating force what is education education is a liberating force and if you have attained education it must liberate you so liberation happens in you enlightenment happens in you if education is happening in you so education is the key to all locks it unlocks everything so at any cost attain education educate yourself well education is not just uh, checking out your books and education you can educate yourself with life skills this is a story and the lesson of life is to be learnt not just the story you get a question and you answer it beautifully you get full on full and you you become the topper of the classroom no do not limit your education to that limitless beyond the skies that is education according to me it breaks all the shackles that is education for me there may be stigmas inside factors that hinder your progress there may be stigmas as outside factors that hinder your progress so in the first episode we find all these things the wrong beliefs the wrong notions the false beliefs that are stigmas please remember there may be a question set on such things or phases where the weightage would be 6 marks remember so one marks question two marks question 
3 marks question, 4 marks question, whatever it is, 6 marks question. And you have RTC also, so please go through every single line to get an idea as to where the line uh, is, if it comes as RTC, reference to the context. There would be a line picked up from any chapter and questions would be set on them, 4 marks. 1, 2, 3, 4. And you have to pinpoint your answer and respond to the question. Okay? So, the similarity, I quickly wind up. Similarity is that both are non privileged. The dissimilarity or the contrast is that Sahib e Alam does not have the vision. He is satisfied with what he is. The prominent thing in him here is that the, the transformation, the, 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 the shift in the type of life that as a rag picker he was living and when he earns a job and earns 800 rupees or something like that and three times uh, meal per day, uh, he is right now. But why is he sad? When he was a rack picker, it was such a big bag that he would uh, put on his, on him, on his shoulders. But he was happy. Why? Now he has a job, earns money. He can have his appetite filled. Three meals per day. But he is unhappy. What is the reason? This is the question six marks, at least six marks. And if you go through the chapter, you will find an answer definitely. With Mukesh, the contrast is that Mukesh dreams. He dreams when you have a dream. You have a reason to fulfill it. Are you getting the point? Mukesh dreams. So in order to accomplish a mission, you must I uh, have a mission first. So make a mission. So he will find that Mukesh is different. The difference also lies in the fact that one belongs to the rag picker community, the other belongs to the uh, Bengal makers community. But both are non privileged, both are sufferers, suffering souls, aching souls, past souls. I, I gave you an introduction into both the both the episodes, the chapter, the lost spring by Anisya. Stories of stolen childhood. Let no childhood get stolen in any child. God bless all of you. May you thrive. May you flourish. Earn capabilities. Keep, take good care of your uh, of your health at all levels, physical, mental, and emotional. God bless all of you. Thank you for listening well.